Well, good morning, Cedar Creek Church and all of our guests that are joining us today. I am so glad that you are here with us. My name is Danny Wilson and I am the campus pastor at our Banks Mill location. And again, just excited that you're here, excited about the worship we were able to just experience and now the message that I get to share with you this morning. And I wanna to start today uh, just with a simple question for you. And my question is this, what's one thing as a, as a Christ follower that you fear? What's one thing as a Christ follower that you fear? You know, as I started thinking about that question, I started thinking about the fact that maybe it'd be sharing your faith. And you think that's one thing that really petrifies me about being a believer is that I need to share my faith, but it's hard to do that and it scares me. Or maybe you think about uh, being asked a question that you don't know the answer to. And somebody is curious about something and they bring a question to you and ask you and you just don't know that answer. Understand why that could be scary for you or maybe it's not living up to God's standard, or maybe it's something as basic as prayer. And what I wanna to do today as we wrap up this series on James is to talk about that specific one. I wanna talk about prayer with you for a few moments this morning, uh, because it's so critical to us growing in our faith, us having a relationship with Jesus, us understanding God's heart. Prayer is critical to who we are as believers. And so I want us to take a few minutes and examine that today. And we're gonna be in James chapter five. We're gonna be wrapping up this series today. So we're gonna be focusing on that chapter today and several different topics are addressed in James chapter five, but one in particular is prayer. And again, that's where I want us to spend our time today. And so we're just gonna look at some of the nuts and the bolts of prayer. Also wanna remind you to do this. If you missed any of these sermons, uh, these messages in the James series, you can go to our app and you can find those. And I wanna encourage you if you missed a message to go back and do that because each week we're learning some very, very important truths from James about our walk with Jesus. And so I wanna encourage you if you missed it to take some time and go back and catch up on those messages. But again, I just want us to take a few moments today and talk about some of the nuts and bolts of prayer. And for some of you, this may be a refresher today. For some of you, this may be brand new to you and the things I'm gonna share you haven't really thought about, but wherever you are in that spectrum, I just wanna remind you that prayer is critical. It's so important to our walk with Jesus and our relationship with Him, and I want you to be confident in your prayer life today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about today is what is prayer? And that sounds like such a basic question, but when you think about it, it's very core. What is prayer? Prayer is simply talking to God. Um, and when I think about that, it's much like talking to a friend, that we talk to God not with big, huge, fancy words and these and vows, but we talk like you would talk to your best friend. Also, I'm reminded that it's the same words that you would use. Again, you don't have to have some huge vocabulary to pray to God. You just use the words that you would typically use. You want to engage with Him. You want it to be a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Him. So again, it's so much like talking to a friend, but prayer is simply talking to God. But you know, it's even more than that. It's actually communication with God. And what's the difference there? Well, talking is absolutely communication, but I don't know about you, but sometimes things come into my life that are such a challenge and such a difficulty and sometimes can be so heart-wrenching, you can't even find words to speak it. You're just heartbroken. And I wanna challenge you in those times as you focus on God to know that's prayer. Even if you can't find the words to speak, just your heart connecting with God's heart is a form of prayer. Also wanna remind you that um, talking to God is, and the communication with Him can come through tears it can come through times of great joy. I don't know about you, but sometimes things happen in my life that are so overwhelming. My gratitude is so grateful to God that I can't even speak. But again, if my heart's connecting with God, that's another way to pray. So I want you to know today, um, what is prayer? It's talking to God, but greater than that, it's communication with Him. And that can come through talking, come through tears, it can come through joy, it can come through even song that at times we're so overwhelmed with God and His presence that we just sing. But the important thing is that we know today that prayer is communication with God. A second thing I want you to know today, and what I want us to talk about today is how to pray. 
Um, and we're given direction in God's Word in Matthew chapter 6 on how we can pray. And I want to take it even a little step further than that and share with you an acronym that I've found helpful for 20 plus years as a believer. And that is the word ACTS, A-C-T-S. The letter A stands for adoration. What is adoration? Adoration is praise. It's just our opportunity to praise God. And one of the best ways to do that is in the book of Psalm. As we read in many, many books in the book of Psalm, you'll find that we see characteristics of who God is. And so it's a time to just stop and to remember, God, you are great. God, you're, you're the one that loves us like no one else. You're majestic, you're powerful, you're all knowing. And we find more and more attributes and characteristics of God as you read through the book of Psalm. And even as you just sit and ponder and think about it, just how great and incredible God is. And we just pour out from our heart those praises on him. So that's what adoration is. The C stands for confession. And that is a time in our, in our prayer time that we simply confess the sin that's in our life to God. And the easiest way to do that is just to sit and to think, God, where is my life not lived connected to you and to your word and to the things that you teach in your word? And we'll actually be specific in that time of the different sin that you know is in your life and then confess that to God. So once we've praised him and once we've confessed our sin to him, uh, move into a time of thanksgiving, a time where you're just thanking God for all the incredible and all the amazing things that he's doing in your life. That could be for your family, for your friends, for your job, for an answer prayer request, for the food you're about to eat, but just a time that we acknowledge that our blessings are from God. So how to pray? Praise God, adoration, confess our sin to him, thank him for what he's done. And then the last thing is supplication. And supplication is just simply humbly and earnestly sharing our request, our request with God. So that would be the time that we just begin to pray about the things that are heavy on our heart, the people that are in our lives, situations that we're facing. We're just earnestly crying out, humbly crying out to him with what those prayer requests are. So that the acronym ACTS, I hope, will help you as you think about how to pray and just some of the different areas that you can focus on as you pray. I also was reminded this week, Terry Watson, our um, Kids Creek director at the Banks Mill campus, was sharing a devotional thought from a guy named Francis Chan. And Francis Chan was talking about something very helpful as he's prayed, and that is to begin to think about who we're praying to. You know, a lot of times we can uh, see prayer as just a routine and something we're supposed to do every day. One of the things that he did that was helpful that I, I wanted to share with you was he actually pictured God sitting right across from him as he prayed. Revelation chapter four, the last book of the Bible, uh, you'll find a great description uh, of who God is. And I would challenge you to look at that, but in your own mind, formulate maybe what you think who God is and imagine him sitting right there with you when you pray. And as you pray, understand that's a personal connection with God. He hears you, he's focused on what you're saying. Um, he is that great friend to us. Yes, he's our Lord, yes, he's our savior, but he wants to be involved in your life and he is listening intently to your prayers. So maybe doing that would be another suggestion on how to pray is actually picture him right there with you. And then the other thing I would say really simply to you is be honest with God. I spent a lot of years in youth ministry and I've talked about this a lot, but I want to challenge you, be honest. If you're angry with God, let him know you're angry with him. If you're happy with him, let him know you're happy with him. If you're frustrated, let him know that. It's through confessing to God what's the condition of our heart is that he can begin to work and move in our lives. So I wanna encourage you to be honest with him as well. So this morning, um, what is prayer? It's communication with God, how to pray, that ACTS acronym, I hope will help you figure out a way uh, maybe to just guide you through your prayer time. But a third thing I wanna talk about is simply when to pray. You know, oftentimes we think about prayer as being something we do in the morning when we wake up or maybe something we do at night before we go to bed. And absolutely, um, those are times to pray, maybe before a meal. But I want you to know today that we're given guidance in Scripture about prayer and how often we should pray. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says this, that we should never stop praying. Think about that. We're told in scripture from the Apostle Paul to never stop praying. So how often should we pray? We should be praying all the time. What does that look like for us? Well, um, I think it means pray no matter what you're doing. 
Pray no matter where you're going. I stopped to think, maybe your prayer would be at your kitchen table before a meal and you're thanking God for the meal he provided for you. Maybe it's in your car as you're driving around town and you pull up to a stoplight. Have you ever thought about praying for the person on your left or the right or the person behind you? And just God bless them. I don't know what's going on in their life, but just bless them. Shine your favor on them. But beginning to just pray for other people or situations that you're in as you're driving your vehicle. Maybe at work, praying about the presentation you're getting ready to go into or praying for the person you know that's struggling in your office or praying about being a witness in your office. I think about praying at the gym. Um, I've never stopped to think about this till this message, but as I enter the gym, there are people all over the place in there that I can individually begin to pray for and to just see them and to realize they're valuable to God, they're important to Him, and I need to be lifting them up in prayer. Of course, praying in your quiet time is huge. Praying as you do your hobbies, whether it's golf or shopping or whatever it is that you do, but just praying as you go, asking God to help you be able to stay focused on what's important to Him, to love the people that are around you, praying about the situations you're in. I will tell you this, God wants to be in communication with you. He loves you unconditionally, and prayer is one of the easiest ways for us to do that. And as we get in the habit of doing that, as we go about our daily walk and our daily tasks that we're about, and we find and, and start practicing what Scripture teaches to never stop praying, your relationship with God is going to be strengthened from that. I also want you to notice in James chapter 5, he gives a little bit of guidance on this, on when to pray. And he gives three specific instances when we, be, when we need to make sure we're praying. One, um, you'll find in James 5, 13, and he says this, Are any of you suffering hardship? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. So we need to pray when our emotions are high. And that could be in a good sense, and that could be in a, in a challenging sense. But we need to pray. And he tells us clearly, pray in the hard times, and we need to lift up our voices and our hearts to him then, but we also need to pray in those happy times. And a lot of times that'll come out in songs of praise, but we need to understand that in those times of high emotion, we need to be praying. We also need to pray whenever we're having physical pain. Um, verse 14 tells us this, and he says, are any of you sick? You should call for elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And one of the things I want you to understand here is that this is, is something that as people are sick, yes, you could call the elders over to pray for you, anoint you with oil, great significance and importance in that. But for us at Cedar Creek, this could happen in a home group. Uh, home groups are so vital to who we are, a place to be an authentic relationship with other people. And so what we could do is have our home group circle around us or pray, or you could call other people that are in your life as you're going through sickness and struggles to come alongside you and pray with you. But the important thing we understand is in physical pain, that's another time that James encourages us to pray. A third time, a third way he encourages us is when we're struggling spiritually. And we'll find that in the first part of verse 16. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And I wanna encourage you today to pray for yourself, pray for other people as you're struggling spiritually. And a very, very important time for us to be in prayer and to remember that not only are we concerned about ourselves, but we're concerned about others as they're going through difficulties, as they're going through struggles, we need to be praying for them as well. So three times, three different ways, James says, when emotions are high, you need to pray. When you're in physical pain, you need to pray. When you're struggling spiritually, you need to pray. So the important thing that we understand here is when to pray. God says, pray all the time. Never stop praying. Continue to be in that relationship with Him continually throughout the day. Again, because He loves you and He wants to be in a relationship with you. And then the final thing I'll share with you is the effects of prayer. And the last part of verse 16 tells us that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. We, we understand here that the earnest prayers of a righteous man do a couple things. And let me do this real quickly. Um, the verse talks about a righteous person. And I want to tell you this, none of us are righteous. God's word says that we're all sinful and we're all separated from him. What makes us righteous is when we surrender our heart to Jesus Christ and we allow him to forgive us of our sin, and we allow him to be our Lord and to be our Savior, and we give him control of our life. And we know from Scripture in 1 John 1, 9 that when that happens, Scripture tells us when we confess our sin, that God is faithful and just and forgives us of our sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 
So it's through Jesus Christ that you and I become righteous. And that's what James is talking about here. The earnest prayer of a righteous person, someone who has a relationship with Jesus and is walking with him has two results. It's powerful and the prayers produce results. And I want you to think about that today. Your prayers are powerful. As you lift your voice up to the God, the creator of this universe, he hears those prayer requests and he's at work and there is power as you pray. But I also want you to see it produces results. Again, because God hears us, God is answering us. He may answer yes to what we're praying. He may answer no to what we're praying. He may tell us, I need you to wait and watch me answer this prayer later on down the road. But I'll tell you, God will answer our prayer. And when he does, there's powerful results in that. So I want you to know as we lift up our prayers to him, through a relationship with Jesus Christ who allows us to be in God's presence, God is able to do powerful things and bring about the results that he wants for his kingdom. You know, my prayer today is um, that you'll just be encouraged, that you'll be encouraged to begin to make prayer an important part of your life. It's vital, it's essential to us being in a relationship with Jesus and growing in that relationship with him. It's one of the most important things that we can do. So my hope and my prayer is today, because I know for so many people, prayer is something that's fearful. It is something that scares them. But I pray as you think through and mull over the things we've talked about and the passages that I've shared with you, that that fear will begin to be taken from you as you pray and you get better and better at this and your relationship with God gets stronger and stronger, that prayer becomes uh, something that you look forward to in a way that you can actually be a witness to other people and God is able to use your prayers to bring across those powerful and those, those results that he so wants to do. So my hope and my prayer is today that God has spoken to you and he's given you some encouragement in the area of prayer and that this is something, again, that you'll have great victory in. So would you join me in prayer this morning? Father, I wanna to come to you and thank you for our time. Father, I wanna thank you for each person that's joining us on live stream today. Father, I wanna thank you for your passion and your desire to be in a relationship with us. And one of the most effective ways we can be in a relationship with you is through prayer. And my hope and my prayer is this morning that your word has spoken to us and the things that I've been able to share have encouraged us um, to begin to pray if we're not doing that and if we're praying to take that prayer to the next step, the next level, and to do it very, very consistently. As your word says, Father, that we pray and that we never stop praying, that we're praying to you all throughout the day and that we're allowing you to do in and through us what you wanna do, and we're just in a relationship like you passionately desire in each one of us. So I pray your word will continue to speak to us today, and I pray it in Jesus' name, amen.